Oh, next computer. Die Corona, die Corona. Burn Corona, burn Corona. Die. Clinton the cat. Sukabalet. All right, let's unplug the battery here. Okay, we have 20 milliamps being taken. Hmm, well, wonder why we're only getting 20 milliamps. Let's see what our PP bus G3 hot is. Our PP bus appears to be zero volts. Yet we're at 20 volts, but 19 by 94 volts, so our CD 3215s are likely doing their job, which means PP3 underscore G3 hot's present. Let's get the board out of the case and go from there. We're doing good since we have a one ohm short to ground on the PP bus of G3 hot. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. I think I know what it is. Do any of you? Do any of you? This is where Paul would say it's not fair. And Paul would have a point. Paul would have a point. Some days you don't feel like turning on your hot air station. So what you can do is you can kind of heat both sides of the component by heating one side and letting the heat travel to the other. Or if the other side doesn't want to heat much, well, it'll, you can still kind of lift up the component from one side. And even if it is a surface mount component, you can solder it without hot tweezers or a hot air station. What you do is you, you solder one side of the board over here. So over here what I could do is I could solder, let's say, only this side, like so. And then I can slide that component right in. So I'm gonna take it off of a donor right now. So watch what we do here. So I'm gonna slide this cap from the donor board in on the top. I, Cause remember, I can only really heat one side properly. I can only heat one side of this cap properly. So I'm going to heat the side where there is solder. But it's going to be flat on the board on the other side because there's no solder on the other side. So I can just do this. Push down. Add some flux. And then we solder the other side. And it'll be flat on the board.
See, no hot air station needed. Just for those of you wondering, since that came up in my chat recently, how would I replace one of these components if I don't have a hot air station? And if you have a soldering iron, you, you really can get a lot of the job done that you would typically use a hot air station for. I mean, you may be able to get it done cleaner if you have hot tweezers, larger hot tweezers or a, so or a hot air station. For sure, it's going to be cleaner. But just if you want to have an idea of how you could actually get the job done. And you can see that it's pretty strong there. You know, I can't really just knock or pry it off. And there's no way for me to get under it because it's flat on the board already. So now what I want to do is I want to see if I got rid of my short circuit. It's kind of curious there. So I'm going to check my PP bus G3 hot. My PP bus right here. Not shorted anymore. Yep, three kilo ohms and rising quickly. So when I plug this in, it's going to take 600 milliamps, which means it's going to be turning on, and you're going to see that the amperage is going to be jumping up, down, up, down, up, down, like it should be on a nice, fixed, happy MacBook. Ahem, Sims Lewis can actually plug the charger in properly. Big if. There you go, 570, 538, 536, 568. That's a happy MacBook. All it really needed was for me to remove that one capacitor on PPBus G3 Hot, the main power rail that was bad. I could see it with my eyes. I didn't really, really need a microscope for it. And you can see, just to, for the hell of it, I didn't use hot air. Again, you don't always need to use hot air to replace the component. What you do is you remove it the way I showed you. Once it's removed, you, have, you wick the pads. You have solder on one pad. The other one's flat. Because remember, your iron can only heat one pad at a time. So you're going to heat that one pad that you put solder on, slide the capacitor in while it's you know, pushed, pushing the capacitor flat on the board. Then when you're done, you can solder the other side and it will be nice and flat on the board. Because if you have solder on both pads, you can only solder one at a time. So you're going to wind up with a cap like this is the board, right? Let's say this is the board and the cap is going to be sitting on it like this. And there's going to be this big wedge between the cap and the board, or the SMD and the board. And then you could, it's, it's easier for it to pry off or break off or anything like that. And that's just kind of sad. You don't want that to happen. So that's about it for that. And because I, uh, I, I just, my, my OCD is killing me, I'm going to want to hot air that into place. Because, because I can! I know, it's, it's a fucking, I, I shouldn't be this OCD about everything, but I just, I kind of want to be. It, this is really not necessary. But when there's something called surface tension. The cap is going to get pulled into place. Once the solder pads are both fully molten, you'll see the cap is naturally going to fall into place into exactly where the god of solder says it should go. Oh, that's... Yeah, I needed to see that. It settles into place, and it's absolutely beautiful. So that's about it for that board. That's it for today. And as always, I hope that you learned something about soldering without a hot air station if you're too broke to have a hot air station. Because everybody who starts out in this business usually starts out too broke to have a hot air station. So there you go.